Hello friends, a lot of residents have asked me regarding when to release the traction in trochanteric fractures. They often have a concern when they release the traction, despite of that the reduction does not change and rather after getting compression the cortex on the medial side becomes negative. So in this presentation I will be highlighting two critical points at which the traction needs to be taken care of. Sometimes you need to release the traction and at times you can just skip it because it's not required. So we will be seeing what is the basic of releasing traction and how does it help in getting better reduction so this is an example of a trochanteric fracture you see there is postromedial combination the LT fragment is broken and lateral wall is thin so definitely a case for cephalomedullary nail like a TFN or PFN so the surgeon had taken the patient on fracture table the fracture appears to be somewhat reduced and a homen elevator has been placed anteriorly to correct the flexion so you see in APU it is aligned in lateral view also this homen is taken taking care of the flexion of the proximal fragment. So more or less it appears to be aligned. Now to avoid the wedge effect, the surgeon had tried to make an entry slightly medial to the trochanteric tip. So that's justifiable. Then he did the proximal reaming. The proximal reamer is directed towards the canal. So that should not be an issue. Still the reduction appears to be satisfactory. And then he passed the nail inside. But you see when the nail is getting passed, this cortex is becoming slightly negative. But here it appears to be somewhat aligned and when the proximal part of the nail is getting inserted the negative cortex is again obvious that means the reduction is going in negative despite of a good alignment you see you might not say that this fracture is in varus but still the cortex is negative which is not a good thing the surgeon was a clever one he tried to place a blunt instrument over the proximal fragment to well guys it now you see the alignment appears to be satisfactory and the cortex which was negative earlier has become positive now so the surgeon was satisfied with the alignment now he plays the guide wire and throughout this procedure he was taking care of this velgization that means the proximal fragment was pushed downwards so that this cortex remain positive of the distal cortex in lateral view he also ensured that the guide wire remains central and the reduction is not changed so it appears to be satisfactory then he inserted the blade because the bone quality was not a good one and to prevent any rotation of the proximal fragment he also inserted a guide pin here so he's taking care of all the forces that may occur while so the blade was inserted at this point now you see there is some opening at the fracture site so the surgeon now thought of getting compression at the fracture site he released the traction and tried getting compression but while getting compression you see what is happening the proximal fragment is coming downwards but something is happening here this spike has now become slightly negative of this fragment that means the positive cortex that the surgeon had tried to achieve prior to the blade placement has changed into a negative cortex so that's not a good thing let's see the video again you see this was positive earlier now after getting compression it is becoming negative here it is coming outwards and here it is negative here ultimately this was the post-op radiograph again you see the fracture site is somewhat distracted despite of the surgeon releasing the traction and unfortunately it has now turned into a negative cortex it is not neutral if we see the neutral cortex we have to extrapolate this line like this so this is definitely a negative cortex not a neutral cortex so whenever you encounter these fractures and the bone quality is not good always aim for a slightly positive cortex because if you gain a negative cortex there will be chances of getting this converted into further negative cortex and there will be chances of blade cut out and sometimes loosening of the blade so always aim for something like this not this currently it is negative you see the follow-up of this patient earlier it was somewhere here now it has gone further laterally that means the negative cortex is becoming more negative in the follow-up now the patient has two problems first the blade has migrated outwards and it is prominent over the skin second thing the patient has increased limb length on right side you see this part is distracted so the patient has actually gained this much length and the third thing is that the shaft has now medialized you see this distance of the shaft from the hip joint has decreased that means now now the patient will have to apply more force over the abductors 
because this lever arm has been shortened and this shortened lever arm will cause pain over the trochanteric region the patient may develop trochanteric bursitis as well and he may walk with a limp so ultimately the patient will not be satisfied so whenever you are addressing these injuries always aim for a positive cortex now i'll show you another example here you see the surgeon had tried to gain a positive cortex but the fracture is still distracted in later view it is aligned but the surgeon had placed the guide wire in this particular position only he has not released the traction at this point even in this distracted position he has placed the guide wire now he has inserted the screw now he has tried to gain compression at the fracture site now see carefully this fracture is distracted here and after gaining the compression it is getting compressed like this like this and like this so ultimately this is a good thing you see the cortex here is positive and the fracture gap is minimal so even if some collapse occurs this positive cortex will not allow further lateral migration of the proximal fragment so this is the medial cortex of the distal segment like here and this is the cortex of the proximal fragment you see this is something we call positive cortex so this is the thing we should aim for and this was the one month follow-up radiograph of the same patient you see the cortices are well aligned and there is no lateral migration of the proximal fragment the shaft is not medialized it is well aligned with the proximal fragment so despite of both the cases having distraction at the fracture site the radiological outcome is not good in the previous case but is good in this case so why is it happening because we need to see what are the critical points we need to address when releasing the traction while we are placing cephalometallary screw now here you see we had thought that the proximal fragment is well aligned with the distal cortex but you see there is a gap here the gap is this much and ultimately this fragment is going to go in this particular direction when we achieve compression so what will happen this cortex is here this cortex is here and this cortex will move in this direction so ultimately it is going to become negative so you have to release the traction before placing the guide wire because once you have placed the guide wire in this particular direction the proximal fragment relation with the distal fragment will not change. You are actually stabilizing the proximal fragment with the distal fragment in this particular distraction. And the direction of compression which we are going to achieve with the screw or a blade is like this. So ultimately this cortex will come somewhere at this level. You have to see the direction of your screw or blade then place an arrow over the medial spike of the proximal fragment that will tell you the final direction of the compression so your spike is here so it will ultimately come somewhere here if we see the direction parallel to the screw so this is a time before placement of your guide wire you need to see whether the medial cortex of the proximal fragment is aligned with the medial cortex of the distal segment so we need to achieve that particular length in which this arrow meets this arrow or if we want a positive cortex then this arrow should come inferior to this level that means somewhere here so that tells you whether to release the traction initially or not ultimately your patient had outcome like this because the medial cortex was proximal to the medial cortex of the distal segment and the direction of the compression was like this so this was the initial position of the medial cortex now it has come somewhere here all because the traction was not released before placement of the guide wire some residents say when they release the traction before placement of guide wire the fracture goes into virus then you have to go for the maneuvers that have been shown in the previous picture like you can place a blunt instrument sometimes the handle of the zig or sometimes a bone punch that places the proximal fragment in a valgus position so that this cortex remains positive so that can be done in a less amount of traction as well now the second case now here you see the direction of compression is this that means the direction of the guide wire or you can say the screw so here if we see the medial cortex of the fra proximal fragment it will ultimately come somewhere here so it is going to be slightly in a positive state because the medial cortex of the distal segment ends here so if we want a neutral cortex we want this much velgization that means the spike should come somewhere here but if we want a slightly positive cortex 
then we should get the spike at this particular level and whenever you have doubt you can draw a horizontal line from the medial end of the distal segment so your spike of the proximal segment should be at this level then when you gain the compression it will ultimately be a positive cortex or a neutral cortex and it will not be a negative cortex and therefore this fragment is going to remain somewhere here it is not going to go inside here let's see the video so you see the direction of the fragment that is moving it has come somewhere here that means a positive cortex so this is the first part when to release the traction so you have to release the traction to that extent that the medial spike of the proximal fragment is at the level of the medial end of the distal segment that means it, they should be like this if we want a slightly positive cortex at the end of reduction and the second time when you need to release the traction is the point when you are gaining the compression because often because of the traction there is pull of this outer segment outwards because it is having muscle attachments of the vastus in this area and because of the tension in the muscle you may have difficulty in getting compression so that point also you need to release some traction that will help in gaining compression at the fracture site that means it will get compressed like this so now it is clear that there are two times when you need to release the traction. First is before placement of the guide wire and second when you are getting compression at the fracture site. If you are releasing the traction after placement of your guide wire that is not going to help. If the medial cortex of the proximal fragment was at a higher level before placement of guide wire it is going to get converted into a negative cortex even if your initial alignment was good. Another example here you see there is an unstable trochanteric fracture. Now here the surgeon had released the traction before placement of guide wire and he had ensured that this spike is at the level of the medial end of the distal segment. So ultimately when compression happens like this this spike is going to come at this level so that should remain positive and he had then released the traction while getting the compression ultimately you see the fragment is positive like this and this was the immediate post-operative radiograph of the same patient you see the positive cortex is maintained in the radiograph and these patients the osteoporotic patients you definitely should go for some positive cortex because that will help in preventing varus collapse and also the medialization of the shaft in this direction so i hope this small presentation regarding when to release traction in trochanteric fractures will be helpful for you in your surgical planning if you have any queries you can put those in comments thank you